I might not be. <laughs> I might not be the brightest kid on the block. Or the most handsome. But I'm certainly not the dumbest. You know, people really have freedom of choice. You can do just about anything you want to do. Oh, sure, some countries you can't exercise certain personal freedoms, and maybe some countries you live under a dictator and they dictate what kind of lifestyle you get to choose from, but inside, where it really counts, between you and God, you pretty much get to do whatever you want to do. A lot of Christians I meet choose, believe it or not, and this is the strangest thing I, I quite haven't figured out yet, but they choose to be unhappy. No, really. They choose to be unhappy. You know, they're in a bad marriage, so they think that that's a reason to be unhappy. Now, God never said that he was going to give you a good marriage or a bad marriage. He just said marriage is a covenant and it's something you stick with and stay with, good or bad, because God causes, just like the rest of us, the sun to shine and the rain to fall on the wicked and the good. So guess what? Just because it's a bad marriage doesn't mean you can't make it a good marriage in the same way that when you're having a bad day doesn't mean you can't turn it into a good day. Because the way that God looks at today is this is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. You see, rejoicing in a day doesn't matter what kind of day it is. Already upset and mad and kind of grumpy and frumpy, you know, and they really don't like to be happy in the morning. And I just figure, okay, how's that working out for you? If that's what you enjoy, hey, go enjoy it. Because you see, God will let you do almost anything you want to do. Now, I'll admit, He has given us certain promises that he said if you do this this will happen you know some of those things are like what foolish people that really are kind of dumb and they aren't the smartest kid on the block call karma you know which is kind of like stupid but you reap what you sow you know that old expression you've heard recently because of politics you know chickens come home to roost that's kind of a farm animal attitude of looking at the scripture and calling it you reap what you sow. A lot of what happens to people, they did. Kind of like that bad marriage we were talking about, you know. Hey, did you sit down and, you know, like talk to your parents about getting married? Did you work with the community that you were going to live in to involve them in your marriage to help you grow in it, you know, and develop together as two separate people that are learning to adapt to each other and grow through the years. Because in the old days, people didn't care whether it was a good marriage or a bad marriage. The fact was, it was a marriage. And what you made of it was your choice, not whether it was good or bad. That was what you did, not what the marriage did. And, you know, I think that's where people right now are making mistakes about this divorce thing. You know, it's like they, they somehow think that they don't carry that marriage into the next one and the next one and the next one. Sure they do. As dumb as that sounds, Jesus said it. You bound yourself to that person. You kind of like gave your soul over to that person. And that person kind of gave their soul over to you, so you're actually dragging around a piece of someone else's soul 
and taking it somewhere else, you know, and kind of throwing it on somebody else. Kind of a bummer, huh? Now, God can obviously cause you to be made new, you know, and change things and rearrange things. He can take the bad day you have and make it a good day. He could take your bad marriage and make it a good marriage. He could take your bad life experience and make it a good experience. But, you see, the only one that can do that is the one who said, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth and he saw it and it was good. You see, that's where people get this mistaken idea about what good is. Jesus said, call no man good except your Father in heaven. Because, quite frankly, there are no good people. Only God is good. Only God can create good. And God can create good out of you. <laughs> so, there's kind of like these promises that God has given that says, look, I know because I'm the one who did it. I know because I'm the one who said it. And I know because I'm the one who made it. So, you want to check with the Creator, then you can find out why you're not experiencing good or you're not enjoying your life. You don't have to be miserable. As a matter of fact, as funny as this may sound, I know to some of you it's kind of a hard concept to believe in, but misery is a choice. Sorrow and sadness is a choice. Literally and quite physically, in your mind you can connect the dots or change the synopsis from sorrow to joy. Because you see, emotion really has a physiological connection. I can tell you, you know, that the government just sent you a bill for $50,000 and you get depressed, oh, bummed out. Mm. But then, in the very next minute, I could tell you that the government also brought the mail in today and you opened it up and the publisher's clearinghouse gave you $150,000. Yeah, I'm a winner. Now, the interesting thing is, physically, really, Let's get real for a minute. Think about these emotions. You opened up the first piece of mail and you got depressed. Nothing changed physically. Look around you. Did anything change? You were holding a letter. You open it up. You read it. You read it. Suddenly you're oh, depressed. Meh. Well, okay. You read it and that's your fault. Put the letter away. You open up the next letter and you're happy and joyful. What changed? Hey, noggin, in your noggin schnoggin, you know, is exactly where the emotions are. Because, you know, the dots got connected. It's called a, like, synopsis, and that's why scientists are right, in part, about part of the emotions, or the soul, being connected, or being attached to this input from the physiological part of the body, from your physical self, your flesh. So... Your choice to give in to those fleshy emotions is your own. Now, there are fruits of the Spirit that come from the spiritual side of your life that are not connected to the physiological input. It can influence those physiological inputs because it comes directly from God's Spirit to your spirit and then goes to your soul and then goes to your flesh. And that's why the Spirit warreth against the flesh and the flesh against the Spirit. Because you have a choice to make. You can be miserable, or you can be happy. Make right choices. The right choice is called righteousness. Because you're learning happiness as opposed to depression and sorrow. So really, the choice is yours. If you really want to be miserable, not only can you, you are. Joy unspeakable. Now him, now to him who is able to keep you without stumbling or slipping or falling, and to present you unblemished, blameless, and faultless before the presence of his glory in triumphant joy and exultation 
with unspeakable and ecstatic delight. Sounds cool to me. And that's from Jude 124. I used to be so miserable that when I went to bed that I wished it was time to get up. <laughs> Imagine that. And when I got up, I was still so miserable I wanted to go back to bed. Wow. Imagine that. I was under the curse of not obeying the voice of the Lord or serving Him with joyfulness. See Deuteronomy 28, 15 through 48. Obedience to God fills our lives with so much joy that we don't even know how to talk about it. The Bible calls it joy unspeakable and full of glory. 1 Peter 1, 8. Experience the joy of being in God's awesome presence. Start your day by praising God for your blessings and worshiping Him with a heart ready to serve Him. You know, when you make your choices to be happy or to be sad, to be miserable or to be bummed out or to be full of peace, love and joy as God promised He would give us by His Spirit. It's up to you. You can choose the direction you go. The direction of a man's heart is his own, but the footsteps are ordered of the Lord. God takes your step-by-step -step process onward in the direction you choose to go. So if you want to spiral down and out, you can go down and out, you know, and just be there. But if you really want to have joy unspeakable, if you really want to have love unbelievable, if you really want to have peace unconceivable, all you got to do is make a choice. I don't know about your choice, but you already know what I choose to do. I choose to obey, because to obey is a whole lot better than sacrifice. And misery is his own company.